Hello, this is Hakuda Bean, and today we're going to r slash entitled parents. If you like this video, please like our video, comment down below, and subscribe to your channel. Before we get into this, I want to let you know that I have a little cat in my room, just in case we get interrupted. Now let's get right into this. Father wa finally wants to have a relationship. Five year, twenty-five years later, my twenty-five female father, fifties male, finally wants to have a relationship with me, and I am so uninterested. TLDR: My father, who was absent for most of my life, is now wanting to have a relationship with me. He says he was absent because of his depression and because I reminded him of his failures. I don't know how to deal with the situation. Walk away is probably the way I do with that. My mom abruptly left my dad when I was a toddler because he was verbally, financially, and slowly becoming physically abusive. One day after he went to work, he pa she packed us up and left him. Growing up, she never spoke badly about him and always encouraged us to talk and see each other. My first memory of my father is from when I was five. He picked me up and we drove to his friend's house to go fishing. I only spoke Spanish at the time, and all his friends were very American. After a couple of hours, he told me to stay with them because he was going to run errands and be back in an hour. While he was gone, I was really scared and confused because I didn't know him. I didn't know the people who left me with and couldn't communicate with them. I tried asking the lady to let me call my mom, but she didn't understand me. When he finally picked me up, it was super late and all I had eaten was some corn pops in it with no milk. We went to his apartment and all he had was a mattress on the floor with a big window in front of it. No shades. I didn't sleep at all. I was hungry. That was the first time I ever saw a sunrise. After that, I was always scared of being alone with him. I would always bring a friend or cousin. I only see him maybe once a year on my birthday and honestly don't remember much of anything about those times. He was mostly absent from my life. When I was 11, we moved to the same city as my aunt, father's sister, who my mom is very close to. I started learning about all the crazy issues my dad's side of the family had. My father came and visited me and his sister and even thought of moving there too. First he tried talking to my mom and I guess Gage to see if she was still interested in him. She wasn't. I didn't notice at the moment. This is when things became bad. My dad started causing problems with my aunt and his mother for being in contact with my mom. He started hitting my mom a, a lot and it affected our relationship even more. He told my grandmother that she was not allowed to be around us. One day, I went to the mall with my mom, grandmother, aunt, and my cousins and we had a great time. At the end, my grandma gave me $1,000 cash and a letter. The letter said she could no longer be my grandma, and she couldn't be in my life. I was 12. My heart was broken because I loved her. My aunt took uh, uh, my, my, me and my mom's side and stopped talking to my, my dad and grandma. He was absent after that. When I was 15, I was going through a rebellious phase with my mom. I grew up a lonely, only child, a latchkey kid, and I was extremely confused about all the issues with my, with my dad. I wanted to learn for myself why my dad hated my mom. At this time, I didn't know my dad had been abusive. I begged him to let me visit him and meet my little brothers. Although I was scared, he took me on vacation to Canada with his wife, kids, and my grandmother. It was awkward, but mostly okay. I totally decided to speak ill of my, mo of my entire mom's side of the family. He blamed my mom for his problems and called her a er, er, bitch, and he just said horrible things. I realized he was a monster. When I got 
I'd beg, I begged my mom to tell me the truth. I learned about the abuse that she endured, his childhood, and the, the abuse he, my aunt, and grandma had endured. All the drama I didn't understand from over the years, everything. Basically, my grandfather was extremely abusive, and my dad's family was consistently getting into fights and had a love-hate relationship with one another. I was shocked, to say the least. Still, I tried to be understanding and to have a relationship with my dad, but he was never interested. He told me he, he would call and never did. He forgot my birthdays, never congratulated me on anything, was just totally absent. I tried visiting him again, but he left me all day at his business alone. He just didn't seem to care about me. Now, years later, he calls me out of the blue. He tells me without apologizing that the reason he's been absent from my life is because he has depression. That he finally has his medication in order, and the police understand that he couldn't even bear to look at me my whole life. That I remind him of my mom and the day she left him. That I remind him of his failures. He calls and texts me often now. But still, to this day, he doesn't and ask about me. He doesn't know anything about me. At all. Nothing. He talks about himself, his business, his vacation, his kids. I answer because I feel bad for him. But it hurts so much and it's hard for me to even think of him. It hurts that when he sees me, he sees his failures. He doesn't see me. I don't think he ever will. And I don't know how to get over that. I don't know either. Personally, I'd probably cut all contact with him. I did with with um my my bio dad when I was fourteen. Cause he was just like like the first and the third story that we're gonna be reading. You'll see. Mom tries to control what I, 25 female, look like and post on social media. We just had a fight with over or the phone on about what I post on my private Instagram. Makeup is my favorite ho hobby, which I'd love to turn into a, a potential income later in life. I post a reel with Amy Winehouse's back to black, which included a transition I came up with that involved a cigarette. Keep in mind that I don't even smoke a lot. A few cigarettes a day. She blew up on me for posting that. But that's not all. I have multicolored hair. Green, blue, purple, many different shades. Oh, I've been wanting to do a special type of blue hair or pink hair. And she will periodically tell me that I don't look my age and that I should wear a, a natural color. Also, always mentions that she liked me the most when I was blonde, which is not my natural hair color. She tells me I'm getting too old for unnatural hair color. Are you kidding me? The older you get, the more or easier it is to dye your hair. Do you know who has the easiest time dyeing their freaking hair? People with gray hair. Or pure white hair. Like, can you imagine? She also comments on the way I dress, saying I look like I'm still in high school. I have a first streetwear style and alternative clothes. She also calls me if I post photos from hangouts with friends where I'm dressed inappropriately. But not because the outfits are revealing, but because... Uh, but again, because I should dress my age. What? <laughs> wow, so apparently you're not dressing your age if you don't dress the way... If you dress the way you want to. Okay, sure. Today I told her I would block her out of my social media because I can't stand her calling me about the things I post. And I told her to please find a therapist because I can't be her therapist. Especially as a mentally ill person who is in outpatient treatment and therapy and takes a lot of meds to function normally. She always dumps everything that's bothering her on me. I just couldn't stand it anymore. Especially because she called to complain about the Instagram reel after I spent three hours with my beloved puppy at the vet because she got very sick. She knew what was going on, and I told her I'm under a lot of stress, but she it just had to tell me. The thing is, she already told me yesterday when I posted it, but over a message. But that wasn't enough, and she had to call as well. I 
I have no contact with everyone in my family except for her. But honestly, considering going no contact with her as well, as soon as I become completely financially independent. Oh, thank you to everyone who shared their age and their current color or colors. You all made me smile, and now I'm even more sure that I will continue to walk whichever color and hairstyle I want for as long as I want. Exactly. If I could afford hair dye, I would be having either blue or pink hair. That would look a lot like, like a certain character from a webtoon that I really like. But I'm broke, so I don't have any. Entitled Homophobic Ant is mad as for supporting your kids after they came out. I have to preface this by saying that this is my fiance's family, so they're actually my in-laws. But because they're extended family, all lives in the... Because they're extended family, all lives in the area, and we've been together for many years, I'm a lot closer to them than typical future in-laws. The parents, aunts, and uncles generally are all super devout Catholics and extremely homophobic. Wow. But their kids are all between the ages of 16 to 29 and have left the church. Two of our cousins, who are sisters age 16, let's name her Jenna and 22, let's call her Jan, are queer. Neither of them are out to their families except for the cousin and generation. Jan has a long distance girlfriend in another her country that she met during college. Her girlfriend was an exchange student and recently visited her under the guise of visiting a friend. Her mom is very paranoid and homophobic and eventually confronted Jen asking if the friend was gay to which she said yes and then asked if she was her her girlfriend. She said no. Her mom kept pressing and eventually Jen confessed they were dating. Her mom flipped absolute shit. Lots of screaming, and things being thrown and smashed. She took her college diploma off the wall and tried to smash it. She took her phone and read through her messages and forced her to break up with her girlfriend and essentially threatened to kick her out. <laughs> wow, this is fucked up. But also, that is almost funny. It helped right after. Now, Jenna, seeing her mom saying a few of these things to her sister, said, Is now a good time to show that I'm also gay? In almost comedic fashion. That almost makes me laugh. Needless to say, me and my fiance received red alert slash gay alert text from them letting us know they came out to their parents and it wasn't going well. We immediately replied saying to come over, asking if they're okay and need anything, and offering our place for them to crash if they need. I said yes, yeah, so we were scared to come over out of fe over a fear of making their mom even angrier than she already was. Well, at that point, that's her own problem, and she can take it up with the with the court of law. So they ended up not coming over. Oh, no, they should have come over anyway. The next day, they pretended to go to work or school and stopped by our place to cry or process and talk. They shared that their mom took Jan's phone and read through all her messages and saw a group chat. She was not pissed at us for offering a place for them to run away to. She told them she doesn't want to come to our wedding anymore. We honestly don't really care as the number one priority for us is our cousin's safety. They shared how she's been verbally abusive their whole lives and was torn between telling the other aunts and uncles about her kids coming out versus keeping it a secret to uphold the family reputation. We didn't think she'd actually tell them because she cares more about, about vanity. <laughs> Fast forward to last night, we're about to watch House of the Dragon my fiance's parents and my future mother-in-law gets a call all from said aunt and telling her that she's mad at us for meddling in family affairs and encouraging them to run away. 
She also apparently said that some text messages between Jenna and us were in invisible ink. She wants to switch to that because they know their mom was monitoring their phones. I told my future mother-in-law that we talk it. It's had to sneak around their parents and that we're condoning their behavior. So now my fiance's parents are involved. Future mother-in-law then shared she's been at the receiving end of being ghosted by Ida's aunt and how there would be years of receiving the silent treatment. This aunt apparently missed all of my fiance's graduation and from elementary to college. Because of fights, she ended up crying because she didn't want on another conflict that would prevent her from seeing her brother. Especially now, because everyone's fighting on good terms after all these years. She understands we were just trying to help, but now she's begging us to apologize to this aunt and make up man's just for the sake of keeping the family together. Fuck that, dude. This homophobic aunt needs to get a freaking life. Yo, why do I suddenly have beef with an aunt-in-law? I'm not going to apologize for supporting our cousins after they went through a traumatic experience, and it's clear that their at fiance's mom is just trying to appease her sister-in-law to avoid conflict. But if we stand our ground, this could bring this extended family into another big fight, and they'll blame us for starting us. This could mean that my future brother-in-law could go months or years without seeing her brother or our cousin, and, and Jenna might be forbidden from coming over or seeing us since she's still a minor. I don't know. I think CPS would probably do something about this, but I can't be sure. It just seems like a ridiculously awful situation. Because those two kids need a safe place, and that clearly isn't with their own mom. Which is horrifying to think of. Edit. Thanks for the words of support, everyone. It's really reassuring and helping us hang in there. I also want to add that fiancé's parents are also homophobic, so this conversation slash future conversations will be hard because they already have a bad bias. They agree with us, us providing a safe space for the cousins, but that's pretty much the extent of their support. My fiancé is not bad and area not out to their aunts and uncles for this reason, so this whole situation has been pretty triggering for them. They came out to their parents years ago, but I think future mother-in-law and future father-in-law uh, honestly suppressed that memory because they my parents never mentioned it and constantly misgendered them. <sighs> That's a hard situation. I don't know what to even say. Anyway, that was uh, r slash entitled parents. If you liked that, uh, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I have no idea what I'm going to be doing tomorrow, so until then, Goodbye.